God of War Ragnarok is a 2022 game which runs on the proprietary engine, and these are the minimum system requirements of this game. So in this video, I'll be walking you through the best settings to get the most out of the game on your PC. While the game doesn't offer extensive graphical customization options, we'll explore the available settings and compare them to find the perfect balance between performance and visual quality. So let's dive in. First, I've turned off the frame rate limit. This allows the game to run as fast as your hardware allows without capping the frames per second. I've also set Reflex On Plus Boost under the Latency Reduction setting, which is crucial for minimizing input lag. This will ensure that your inputs are as responsive as possible, which is especially important in action-packed games like God of War Ragnarok. And under the scaling options, I've chosen Temporal Anti-Aliasing, and its quality set to Ultra Performance. This scaling method ensures that the game uses the best balance between performance and visual quality by rendering at a lower resolution and upscaling to your display resolution. Next, I've set the graphics preset to the lowest setting. While this does mean sacrificing some visual fidelity, it provides the best possible performance for low-end systems. I've also turned motion blur down to the lowest setting to minimize distractions and further improve performance. Lastly, I've enabled reduced flashing, which is a great option to reduce any unnecessary visual effects that could distract or strain your eyes over long gaming sessions. Now that we've applied these settings, let's see how the game performs. With everything set as mentioned, the game is surprisingly smooth and playable. I'm impressed with the optimization Santa Monica Studio has put into the PC version of God of War Ragnarok. Even at these lower settings, the game still delivers an enjoyable experience. Next, I'll be testing the Intel XESS scaling method. This is Intel's answer to advanced scaling technology, similar to NVIDIA's DLSS and AMD's FSR. I've set the quality level to Ultra Performance to maximize FPS, and all other settings remain the same as before. While testing, I noticed that Intel XESS offers slightly less performance than TAA, but the game is still perfectly playable. Keep in mind that while I'm recording this footage, some FPS drops are expected, but without recording, you should see a slight improvement in performance. Now I've switched to AMD FSR 3.1 with the quality still set to Ultra Performance. FSR is AMD's scaling technology, designed to boost performance while maintaining visual clarity by upscaling from a lower resolution. With these settings, the performance is phenomenal. In my experience, AMD FSR consistently delivers better FPS compared to Intel, XESS, DLSS, or TAA, making it my go-to option for demanding games like this. You can see the FPS counter climbing, and gameplay feels incredibly smooth. Next up is NVIDIA DLSS, which I've set to Ultra Performance. DLSS uses AI to upscale the resolution while maintaining quality, and it's particularly beneficial for systems with NVIDIA GPUs. Testing with DLSS shows solid performance. While it's not as fast as AMD FSR in my opinion, but it's still a very competitive option. Well, I expected slightly better results from DLSS, but it's by no means bad. It's still a solid choice if you're using an NVIDIA card. Now, let's take things up a notch by enabling frame generation. This is a feature that significantly boosts your FPS by generating additional frames, making the gameplay feel even smoother. I've kept the scaling method as AMD FSR 3.1 with the quality set to Ultra Performance. Once frame generation is enabled, you can see a massive improvement in FPS, almost double in some cases. When I'm not recording, I can easily hit between 125 to 130 FPS, and sometimes even higher in less CPU-intensive areas. This setting is a game-changer if you're looking for the best possible performance. Lastly, I'm going to test with frame generation enabled, scaling set to NVIDIA DLSS, and quality to ultra performance. The FPS is once again doubled, but personally, I find AMD FSR to offer smoother gameplay, especially when paired with frame generation. However, NVIDIA DLSS is still a great option, and the choice between the two largely comes down to personal preference and your hardware setup. So guys, that's all for today's video. These are the best settings I've found so far to maximize performance in God of War Ragnarok, especially for those with low to mid-tier systems. 
As the game currently doesn't offer many advanced graphical tweaks, this is the best we can do to get the smoothest experience possible. But if new options or optimizations are added, I'll be sure to update you with another video. So make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends who might have lower spec PCs. It'll help them get the most out of the game, and I'll see you all again in the next video. So until then, take care, and happy gaming!